look, boys and girls, the only reason there are white people is because black people came here first. And they faded as they moved farther and farther north from the equator. Their melanin faded so that their skin, their hair, and their eyes got lighter. Their brains didn't get smaller, but their skin, their hair, and their eyes got lighter. That's the only reason you children can call yourselves white. And you aren't white. We are all shades of brown. The scientific community is in deep shock because black DNA has broken the science. It was kept a secret until now, hidden quite well. But now, we know about the DNA test that has changed everything. In 2013, a quiet DNA test from a black man in South Carolina detonated like a scientific bomb. His name was Albert Perry. No one in his family could have imagined that when his blood was drawn, it would shape the foundation of human history. What researchers found wasn't just unusual, it was impossible. His Y chromosome didn't belong to the known human story. It was older than the first man, older than the bones that built anthropology's sacred timeline older even and the definition of homo sapiens itself. One geneticist confessed they didn't even realize it was human at first. Another admitted they had no idea such a lineage could exist. Imagine that, a man living in the 21st century carrying DNA that science had no category for. If the textbooks are to be believed, Perry's lineage should not have survived. Yet there it was, alive and thriving. And the terrifying question that followed was simple. Had we been lied to about the true origin of humanity? In this video, let's reveal the radioactive truth. The Black History Archives Albert Perry never imagined that his blood would rupture the foundations of human history. He wasn't a scientist or an academic looking to publish a groundbreaking paper. He was an ordinary African-American man from South Carolina, recently deceased when his relatives submitted his DNA to a genealogy company that were looking for family connections, maybe clues about their origins, before the chaos of slavery erased the records. What they received instead was not an answer, but a seismic question mark. When Family Tree DNA processed Perry's sample, their analysts tried to place him on that Y chromosome tree, the chart that scientists believed accounted for every male lineage on Earth. For decades, geneticists thought they had this tree pinned down, all men alive today, they claimed, traced their Y chromosome to a single man who lived about 200,000 years ago in Africa, nicknamed Y chromosome Adam. Every male lineage tested until that point could, in one way or another, be connected back to him. Perry's DNA refused to cooperate. His Y chromosome was so distinct, so ancient, that it split off almost 338,000 years ago, nearly 140,000 years before the supposed father of all men. This was not a clerical error, nor a contamination problem in the lab. It was a genetic fact. Perry's lineage was older than the oldest fossils of Homo sapiens. The Moroccan remains from Jibal Arhoud, estimated at 300,000 years old, already stretched the timeline of modern humans to its limit. Perry's DNA went further back still, it suggested that his paternal line diverged long before our species, meaning his ancestry carried traces of a forgotten chapter in human prehistory. The discovery was explosive because it overturned assumptions that had become dogma. Geneticists had neatly arranged humanity's past into a linear story. That Homo sapiens evolved in Africa around 200,000 years ago, spread out across the world, and replaced all older populations. Perry's DNA disrupted that theory. It whispered that modern humans had not been alone, that other archaic groups lived alongside them, and that their bloodlines did not all vanish. Perry was the evidence walking among us. Now, to make sense of this anomaly, researchers assigned Perry's Y chromosome to a new category, haplogroup A00. In genetic terms, haplogroups are like surnames that pass down male or female lines, clustering people into ancient clans with shared ancestors. Most men in Africa today belong to haplogroups such as E or B. Outside Africa, groups like R and J dominate, but Perry's lineage didn't slot into any of these. His was the root, a branch so old it preceded the tree as scientists thought they knew it. What it means is unsettling. If a zero zero exists, then the idea of a clean, simple timeline of Homo sapiens emerging 200,000 years ago and marching into history is false. Instead, a zero zero hinted at something far messier. One possibility was interbreeding. Just as modern humans outside Africa carry fragments of Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA, perhaps African populations absorbed genetic material from a much older, now extinct group. 
Another possibility was even more radical. Perhaps Homo sapiens wasn't the single, neat first draft of humanity. Perhaps multiple lineages coexisted and contributed to what we are today. Scientists had always known Africa contained the deepest genetic diversity on Earth, but a zero-zero exposed just how much had been missed. Michael Hammer of the University of Arizona, one of the lead researchers, admitted that when his team first saw Perry's eye chromosome, they didn't even recognize it as human. The shock was not just its age, but the fact that it was carried by a living man. This wasn't a fossil or a degraded sample from an ancient cave. It was a vibrant lineage still alive in the 21st century. And yet, despite the magnitude of the discovery, coverage was muted. Published in the American Journal of Human Genetics, the study confirmed a zero zero's antiquity. But outside a few specialist outlets and short reports in Nature and National Geographic, it faded from view. It was as if scientists weren't sure how loudly they wanted to admit what they had found. However, some researchers could not sleep peacefully at night. Tracing the origins of a zero zero led them back to Central Africa. Among nearly 6,000 Y chromosome samples, Hammer's team identified 11 men whose DNA resembled parodies. They lived in Western Cameroon, particularly among the Nambo people. That region, long isolated, had acted as a reservoir for this ancient lineage. On the other hand, there are some very interesting patterns. For example, hunter-gatherers seem to be, today, the hunter-gatherer populations or cultures in Africa today seem to be fragments of a much larger population in the past, maybe some 35,000 years ago in western parts of Africa. Preserving it through millennia of change, this geographic link brought the story full circle. Perry's ancestors had been enslaved Africans, uprooted from their homeland and shipped across the Atlantic under conditions designed to erase every trace of identity. Names were stripped, languages lost, history severed, but the DNA remained. Across oceans, whips, and auction blocks, Perry's bloodline carried the world's oldest genetic signature into the heart of America. That survival is rich in irony. The system that wanted to obliterate black heritage ended up smuggling into the new world the most ancient heritage of all. The discovery transformed Perry's story into more than science. It became history with teeth, a living reminder that African bloodlines are not just old, but foundational. His DNA didn't merely survive slavery. It survived prehistory itself. However, one would expect such a discovery to dominate headlines, rewrite textbooks, and reshape classrooms. It did not. Instead, it slipped quietly into the margins. Why? Part of the reason lies in science's discomfort with ambiguity. For decades, textbooks have described human origins with tidy timelines. One Adam, one Eve, one migration, one story. Perry's DNA complicated everything. A zero zero wasn't simply an older date to add into the chart. It demanded a rethinking of how species emerge, interact, and survive. Scientists prefer certainty, and Perry offered none. But there was another reason, one that speaks to power rather than data. A zero zero does not flatter the established narrative. Western anthropology has long highlighted discoveries from Europe and the Middle East, Cro-Magnon, Neanderthal, Mesopotamia, while treating Africa as a background. Perry's DNA disrupts that framework. It demands recognition that Africa is not just humanity's cradle, but its continuous center, where the deepest genetic roots still live. For societies that built their hierarchies on the idea of African inferiority, this is a dangerous truth. To admit that black genomes contain the oldest unbroken lineages is to admit that the myths of racial hierarchy collapse. To accept that African blood predates every civilization is to confront the uncomfortable reality that the foundations of progress were laid on stolen ground. Lies do not die quietly, and so the discovery was received with a quiet shrug instead of a revolution. Interestingly, Albert Perry never lived to see the storm his DNA created. He died in 2012 before researchers fully decoded what his blood carried. But his Gly chromosome spoke louder than any textbook. It was not merely a genetic code, but a message. One that said black people were not the late arrivals of history, but its beginning. That message matters because it flips the story of power. Every system built on the notion of black inferiority relies on erasing Africa's primacy in human history. Yet Perry's lineage reminds us that the so-called minority is the majority of time itself. The most ancient, unbroken human lineages live in black bodies today. The genome of the enslaved carries more depth, diversity, 
and memory than the rest of the world combined. Now, forbidden questions arise. If a zero zero survived, what else remains hidden in Africa's genetic landscape? Fossils from places like Iwo Eluru in Nigeria or Ishango in the Democratic Republic of Congo already suggest the presence of archaic features long after modern humans supposedly dominated the continent. These finds, coupled with Perry's DNA, point toward a complex scenario, multiple lineages coexisting, mixing, and contributing to what we call humanity. This echoes discoveries outside Africa, where modern humans interbreed with Neanderthals in the Middle East and Denisovans in Asia. But Parity's case suggests something even older, a ghost population in Africa that predates them all. Instead of one clean origin, human history looks more like a braided river with channels splitting, merging, and diverging over hundreds of thousands of years. For geneticists, this changes the search. Instead of assuming the tree is complete, they must accept that deep African lineages may still be alive, carried in villages overlooked by global science. For society, it means grappling with the truth that African diversity is not an anomaly but the norm. Every non-African population is a sliver of that diversity, a subset carried outward during migrations. Tell us, if Africa holds the deepest genetic roots, why do school books still start the human story in Mesopotamia or Europe? Could there be other ghost lineages hidden in plain sight, still living in remote African villages? Isn't it true that if the DNA of all black people in the world is studied, we will know about forbidden things which will be too much to handle? Would you like us to make more videos? If yes, please support us by subscribing to the Black History Archives and clicking the bell icon. You can check out more videos on our channel too.